Whoa. All right. Snuff slush? <laughs> we are excited to be here. I am Elizabeth. We're here with Neil Greek. He's the Casper, one of the Casper co-founders and current COO. He is changing the way we all sleep, which I'm sure we could all use a little bit of um, here today. Started the company in 2014 and has seen amazing growth, um, okay. disrupting the sleep industry, mattresses, and now a bunch of other products. They even have a dog mattress, too, so we're pretty excited to talk about that. Um, fix, fix our sound, make sure we can hear Neil. So Neil, let's talk a bit about why you decided to be a mattress company. It sounds a little boring. What, what, what was interesting to you about this? Well, that's a bit louder than I expected. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I always wanted to be a mattress salesman growing up. It was, uh, no, um, <laughs> I'm joking. It was, so small vision, big vision, right? We saw that, um, how many of you guys have bought a mattress before? Raise your hand if you've bought a mattress before. Almost everyone, right? I think universally around the world, it is one of the worst experiences possible. And I saw this, when we launched our business in Germany, you'd see Matratzen Concord out there, right? 50% off, always signs, there's commission sales people. It is, it's like worse than buying a used car. And so we knew that, um, Disrupting a sleepy industry, to use a terrible pun, um, was an interesting problem to solve. But more importantly, um, there's, people are, care more than ever about being healthy. We're drinking green juice, we're going to spin class. We care about sleep more than ever, right? We know it's the fundamental um, human technology that powers every bit of our lives. And yet, there's no brand out there, um, or there was no brand out there that was saying, hey, let's make best-in-class products that unify all of this stuff so that we can really focus on helping people sleep better to enable a better life. Um, and so it wasn't really just about the mattress or the sheets or the pillows. It was about how do we solve a, a more interesting, higher-order problem um, to inspire people to live a better life. And your dad um, knows a bit about sleep. Talk about that in your history with, with sleep in your family. Yeah, it's... I never, it's kind of, it's funny how things come full circle. I, I never, you know, thought, my parents had always wanted me to be a doctor. And so um, I went to Brown University. I ended up starting medical school. My dad's a physician and he's a sleep doctor. And so, you know, for me, in, in the entrepreneurial journey, I never thought I was going to stray. I always thought, you know, I'm going to go to medical school. I'm going to become a physician, you know, probably like the 10th or 20th person in my family over many generations to um, eventually become a doctor. And I guess it was always kind of percolating at the back of my mind, right? The idea that um, making consumer products in the world of the intersection between healthcare, technology, um, and making people feel good is a really interesting place to be. And so when I was in medical school, I was always churning through different ideas, right? We're learning about how the, the most advanced technology in the entire world, the human body works. And yet there aren't a whole lot of things that interact with the human body um, especially from a consumer products world that have been well designed. And so um, I ended up leaving medical school and I moved to New York and I, I didn't actually immediately start Casper. I worked on an e-commerce e company in the middle and um, after some time met some incredible people, um, Philip and Luke and some other co-founders and decided that we wanted to pursue Casper. Okay, so let's talk about that because I know people here have ideas, but then you say, okay, I want to start a mattress company. What do you do? You go test them all out and then design your own. How do you actually get that idea? I think it's, what I always tell people is, there is going to be a very circuitous path for you to get wherever you're going, right? Throughout my life, I never thought this is the place I was gonna be at, right? I had gone to medical school, I had done work with nonprofits in clean water, um, I had done some stuff in synthetic biology, and so for me it was always about being passionate about learning different things very quickly. And so what ended up happening was that, um, when, we, when my co-founder, Philip, had been selling mattresses online for quite a long time, he'd sold like almost $100 million worth, starting from his dorm room. When he told me that, I was like, oh my God, people would buy a mattress online? What a crazy idea. <laughs> and so, and then, you know, but we had conviction that, okay, we can build an interesting brand, but we didn't know how to design a product. And so, uh, the, um, one of my best friends from medical school, her fiance was a lead designer at IDEO, and I called him up and said, hey, Jeff, do you know anything about how to design a mattress? And it turned out they actually had a lot of experience in designing mattresses. Um, what are the chances? And so, 
the, the point was that it's all about people, yeah. right? It, it comes down to can you find the right people that you want to work with that are going to support you, that, you're going to, that are going to inspire you on a day-to-day -day basis to go and pursue the really big ideas? Because um, the reality is the first thing you do is, isn't going to work. You know, Casper is probably like the third or fourth company that, that a couple of us have started together. And many of the things that you pursue aren't going to work. But you have to kind of keep hitting the pavement over and over and over again. And if you have people that you want to work with on a routine basis um, that are going to teach you things, um, then it's easy. And so to go you know, back to your point about how to test an idea, um, I know many of you out there are probably you know, investors, have done lots of interesting things before. The hard part is most of the great ideas in the world people are going to think are dumb, right? We pitched 50, 60, 70 people, and everyone said, no one's ever going to buy a mattress online. That's a dumb idea. Don't do that. You know, and, and we had no money. We were like $50,000 in credit card debt. You know, we had like put up everything we had. And then finally, you know, Ben Lear, Lear Ventures said, hey, you know, that's an interesting idea. You know, I'll go in with you guys. And so um, if we had listened to the first 50 people who had all said, that's a dumb idea, Casper wouldn't exist today. And so I think in many ways, it's just about having conviction um, because you're not always going to get that immediate market validation. Like once we launched and we, we brought it out into the world, we ended up you know, being very lucky in that we struck a nerve. But at the very beginning days, there were definitely some hard times when we asked ourselves, like every day I'd wake up and say, like, is this really a good idea? Like if both my parents and all these investors think this is a dumb idea, should I really be doing this? <laughs> and what, what do people think is dumb? I mean, so one of the premises behind it is this one size fits all idea that there is actually a mattress that we all could sleep on and enjoy sleeping on. How, do you, how did you think that people would buy into that? And how did you ultimately get so many people to, to buy into it? The original idea for Casper started when we, so when you go to a mattress store, they kind of parade you around and they say, they ask you, you know, what's your budget? What does your budget have to do with how well you're going to sleep, right? Or what firmness you want? It's all kind of a game that they play to get you to slot you into different places. And so one of the key insights we had is when you go to a great hotel, you usually end up sleeping well. Right? Why? So this whole idea that you have to try 15 different firmnesses today makes absolutely no sense. You know, when we ended up doing so, everything we do is really focused on human-centered design. And so at the very beginning, we interviewed you know hundreds of people. We watched how they were sleeping. We'd build different variants of mattresses, have people test them. And the the very very beginning, we weren't even sure that we were going to make just one. And what ended up happening was that like 95% of people gravitate gravitated towards liking the same model. So we realized like wow, if you take a step back, the conventional thinking was always there have to be so many different options out there, right? If we live in a world in which there's 50 options for everything. There's colors, sizes, this, that. And so what we realized is if we actually just like minimize the amount of choice that you have, if we make an amazing product and back it with amazing surface, actually most people are going to like it. Um, and so we, we made a really big bet. And the way we, we solved for it was we said, we're the first people ever to say, you know what? Why don't you try sleeping on it to decide if you like it, right? And so you'd have, at the time, 40 days, now 100 days to try it. If you don't like it, we'll give you all your money back. And it was a radical concept because before that, it was always, think about the business model, right? It was always pick something, you're going to try it in the showroom, you know, whether or not you end up liking it, it almost doesn't matter because you can't really send it back. And what we said is, we don't even want you to try it in a showroom to, to start with, right? You're just going to buy it sight unseen because other people have bought it before because you like the brand or you've heard it's good quality. Try it in your own home, and then if you don't like it, send it back. And so we, we just tried to flip the whole business model that's on its head and get people thinking in a very different way. Has that, did that cost you in the beginning? I mean, how many people slept on it for 100 days and then now say, actually, I've changed my mind? Does it happen a lot? Very few people, luckily. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that we think about the psychology of buying an expensive purchase like that, right? Most of the time when you get angst and you've shopped at a mattress store, at least specifically with mattresses, it's not that you don't like the product. It's always you're thinking to yourself, it's this FOMO, right? Like, should I have gotten the firmer one or the softer one? Should I have gotten the more expensive one or the less expensive one? Should I have got, you know, and you think to yourself, and then all of a sudden now you have this inner narrative that keeps circling, right? And you're thinking, this could be better. How come it's not right? This could be better. How come it's not? And so, I think just like removing that amount of choice makes it so much easier for people. And then we actually back it with amazing products. We're the only people that have, you know, we have a 50 person R&D team in San Francisco and we do everything. We're checking firmness, humidity, dew point, ergonomic support. We test every different factor out there. So much so the Consumer Reports just said we're one of the best mattresses in the foam category they've ever tested. You know, we won the Shift and Barn test in Germany. 
Um, and because we're like obsessively focused on delivering, you know, the best products related to sleep out there. So you guys have seen crazy growth, 300 million in three years. How did you get there? What's your advice to people out there who have that germ of an idea and now, you know, want to be up on stage here like you? <sighs> I wish there were good, easy things. I, you know, I think it comes down to you just have to make amazing products that people love. Like there's, there's, I wish that there were some magic sauce to it, but the reality is if you keep yourself honest and you, and you have obsessive focus on the details, and the little details really matter, right? The first, and, and I think it starts with the founding DNA to some extent, right? Like we, for, at Casper, are super obsessive about our customers, right? The first 2,000 or a couple thousand phone calls, chats, emails, we were doing them ourselves. Like until we hired the first you know, couple people, we had a round robin on a Google Voice number for our phone support. And so if someone called us at 2 o'clock in the morning, it would just go to my cell phone. And so a lot of our first customers are even friends with us today because when they needed something, we were there for them. But what it taught us was that if you have that obsessive focus, you're going to have customers that are obsessive about your brand that are going, going to go and tell lots of other people about it. And then you, you all of a sudden have this scaling effect where you know, one person tells 10 people, who tell 100 people, who tell 1,000 people, who tell a million people. And you can end up growing pretty quickly like that. And, and so when people say, like, you know, we've built a brand, um, I, we're very proud of the fact that I think, you know, in terms of our visual identity, we're quirky, we're fun, we're trying to create um, a brand that's really focused on sleep and then inspires people that sleep is the, the third pillar, really, right? It's going to be what motivates people. But it's not just about the way we look, right? If we didn't act that way, if you didn't believe that Casper is a good company and I trust them and they have amazing service and amazing products, then it would feel hollow, right? You would see this like veneer of an identity, but then when you actually shop at them, you'd be like, ah, oh, but they make crappy stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think part of the reason that, that what comes with growth is when two plus two can equal four, five, six, because you've actually locked in those pieces together, um, you can end up scaling a lot faster than you could ever possibly imagine. So you decided to then differentiate a bit. Now you have bedding products and you have a dog mattress. You know, how far do you take that when you have that core product that really made your business? Yeah. When do you say enough, this is, this is where we're going to end our expansion of the brand. This is not true to the brand anymore. I think for us, the mattress is just the starting point. You know, we never originally, like we talked about with Small Vision, the mattress market is enormous, right? $14 billion in the United States, $20, $30 billion globally. There's the potential to build an enormous business here, right, in just that category. But the reality is that mattresses are just the entry point, the starting point, right? Like, none of you wake up every day here and think to yourself, wow, like, I wake up every day just because of some small vision that I'm doing some micro thing, right? Like, what motivates us on a day-to-day -day basis is really thinking about how can we create an entire ecosystem that's going to dramatically change your life? And it, I'll tell you a story. I remember... Um, Early on in the days of Casper, I ended up, and this kind of inspired our service philosophy as well, um, talking to, so in our, in our, we ordered like something like 40 mattresses when we first launched because we thought, okay, these are going to take us a couple of months to sell. You know, we didn't have a lot of inventory. Everything was made by hand. And so um, in the first day, we sold something like over $100,000 worth of product. In the first month, wow. over a million dollars worth. And we were very, very humbled. But one of the things we did is, we didn't quite realize how long it was going to take us to deliver these beds, right? Because we, we ended up having to scale the supply chain. It took a long time. And so we accidentally promised some people that we were going to send the mattresses within a couple days, and we didn't fulfill that promise, right? So I remember hearing, getting a phone call from um, a husband of, a, of, of, of this woman who is about to give birth, um, and they didn't have a mattress to come home to and sleep on. And he was so angry. And I remember just having this moment where I was like, holy crap, we have completely screwed up this situation for someone for whom sleep is the most important thing. These people are new parents. They're coming home. They're going to bring a child into the world. And, you know, the precious minutes that they have are super, super important. And so connecting to that higher order purpose is really what matters, right? It's not about just shipping a block of foam to someone's home. And so that's what kind of, like, has continued to motivate us on a day-to-day -day basis is thinking about... Um, if we can optimize your sleep environment 5%, 10%, 15% on an ongoing basis, there aren't many things that you can do besides exercising and eating healthier that will fundamentally completely change your life. You know? And if you think about the compounding effects, if you slept 10% better every day, think about like, what would happen. Right? You would be more creative. You'd be more interesting. You could do so many more fun things in the world if you could sleep better.
And so when it comes to products, we've been super obsessive about always finding a key insight. You know, When it comes to sheets, for example, we thought, how interesting could the textiles business be, right? Like sheets, they've been around for hundreds of years, people sleep on them, whatever. <laughs> but it turns out that um, there's always a key insight that's super interesting in any given market. So when it comes to sheets, we've been told forever that thousand thread count, hotel collection, Egyptian cotton, you have to have these like super expensive sheets. But when you actually study um, what ends up happening when people use like thousand thread count sheets, what the weave, right, which is super tight on high thread count sheets, makes it really, really difficult to, to breathe underneath them. And so during the course of the night, if you end up having high thread count sheets, people oftentimes are kicking out their feet underneath their sheets. You're getting sweaty. It's, you're getting humid. You realize, like, wait, there's something really interesting here, right? We've been told forever we have to sleep on a high thread count. But when you put sensors on people, we find that the dew point is peaking, humidity is peaking, temperature is peaking. There's got to be something interesting here. And so we ended up inventing a whole new kind of weave that's just as soft, but um, but actually is way, way more breathable so you can sleep better. And so I think there's the, when, you, when you have a really interesting problem in mind, right, how to help people sleep better so they can live a better life, you can actually take really mundane things like sheets or mattresses or whatever it may be, but completely change the way people think about them um, so they invest in them and can live a much better life. And you've now sell in stores. So you started online and you've gone to stores, sort of the opposite of what a lot of major retail companies are trying to do now. How do you do that, and how scared of you are, are you of the current retail environment? I love retail stores. I, people always say retail is going to like raise your hand if you've <laughs> shopped in a store in the last week, right? Almost That's everyone you. here has shopped at a store, right? I mean, look, I love Amazon. I buy a lot of things on Amazon, but the reality is, going into a like, why does everyone love going to the Apple Store? Because it's fun. You go inside, you get to Can't buy. Be. Can you imagine like? Going into a place where you love giving them your credit card, and you're like, please, no, give me the iPhone X. I want it. I have to have it. You know? <laughs> like, that's the kind of retail experiences we should be creating, where people are having fun inside, and you're, they're social. And like, we learned this because our very first office was on Bond Street in New York. It was a second floor loft, and we had a bedroom in the back. I guess now it seems kind of creepy, but you know, people could just walk inside, and there was a bedroom, and like, you'd walk past our desks, and you could, tr you know, try out the mattress. And so. You know, the first couple thousand customers would just walk into our office and try it out if they wanted to. But on Saturdays, something crazy would happen, right? We'd open up champagne, we'd have cookies, we'd have like, you know, dog treats out. And the normal mattress store has like one or two people a day come by, right? We'd have hundreds of people walking into a second story loft and like it became a party. And I had this one moment where I remember I walked outside and someone was like, holy crap, this is like the coolest party in town right now. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself like, we're selling mattresses. And someone just said, this is the coolest party in town. <laughs> you like, know you're doing something like, right. There, if you really care about making amazing experiences and you can make them social and you get people talking about their lives and, and, and what they care about and you can turn it into an experience where it's fun, then retail can be amazing. And, and we'll continue to do that. You know, we just opened up 15 pop-up stores uh, throughout the US. We have an amazing relationship with Target where um, we're gonna be doing a lot of interesting things with them. And so I think that you know, we're obsessed about creating you know, um, amazing omni-channel experiences. And it'll start with digital, but of course it'll involve um, interpersonal things like retail. I'm gonna get one quick one in our last second. Any plans for you guys to take the company public and uh, what would it take for that? Uh, TBD. <laughs> All right, figured that was time for the last one. Thanks so much, I think that our time's up, but thanks for everyone for tuning in. And uh, we'll, thanks for having us. we'll hopefully can get all a good night's sleep on a Casper mattress. Thank you. <laughs> I think we can...